CEO Ronald Lee created difference. Check this out. My man got the Eileen's bowling buddy right there. That's the Rev trainer. Anyway, so we're here at the I Bowl Strikes event. They are not bowling on a house shot, they're bowling on a pattern. It's kind of a stressed out version of Chameleon, and we're gonna watch some people practice. One of the things that's kind of interesting or something that you should obviously know, when you bowl on a 43 foot pattern, which is what this is, that means it's gonna be a little bit long. There's some, there's some mills to it too, so there's a lot of mills to it. So typically what that means is, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't have a ball that goes too long. You're gonna make sure your ball picks up. Uh, I see a lot of people with shiny bowling balls, and that's not typically what you would use on a pattern like this. Now we're gonna watch Sean. Sean is a accomplished bowler. He's doing some surface like he's supposed to. He's playing it, it's not like he's supposed to. So that's really what you should be doing right there, actually. You should be uh, kind of close to the head pin, uh, you know, 13, 14, 15, uh, at the break or at the release to and keep it online. Because if you don't and you miss left, or miss right, I'm gonna say miss right if you're a right-hander, your ball's never coming back. So you wanna be as close to the pocket as possible and you wanna keep your angles kind of straight. And that's just one of those things that if you go on enough patterns, you become familiar with that. Yeah, you on you on the you on the YouTube channel, Sean. We got you. See he missed a little right there. Anyway, if you if you bowl enough patterns, you'll learn that trick. Like you'll learn shiny balls aren't necessarily what you want to use on longer patterns with a lot of volume because they will over push and not recover very well. Now once the lanes break down, that could be a different story, but definitely not out the gate. So you want stronger pieces like that. You want stronger pieces, you want rollier pieces, you want balls that are similar to that to be able to get you a consistent readable ball motion. You don't necessarily want to start out with shiny equipment because like I said, it'll go too long. Go too long, not recover. So there's a lefty there. This ball's hooking a little bit. And I'm seeing, I'm looking at the ball racks, look at the ball returns. I'm just seeing, you know, who's got dull balls, who's got shiny bowling balls. Because if you got dull bowling balls, you're probably in a little bit of a better position. Let's watch, let's watch some more people here real quick. So looks like he's got a dull bowling ball. He's in. Oh, he's hooking it. Yep, that's, that's probably a good little look right there. So that's kind of the right kind of mindset you want to be in. And let's, let's do a comparison. I mean, let's go find somebody who's got a shiny bowling ball. What's going on, man? find somebody with a shiny bowling ball and uh, kind of see how they're doing. So I don't know. We'll see if we can find somebody real quick. Looks like he's got a, man, it's a virtual gravity. Wow. And he's playing outside too. That's kind of interesting. Let's, let's go back down. Let's go back down this way. So it's important to, to keep notice of those kind of things, right? Who you're bowling with, how they're playing the lanes, how you're playing the lanes. All that stuff kind of matters. Um, I like to look at the ball returns first. The ball returns tell you a whole lot on the front side. So we're going to find somebody who's got a shiny bowling ball. And we're going to see where they're playing at. Let me see. Let me see if he got a shiny bowling ball. I don't know if he does or not. We'll find out together. So he's inside. That's, that's a good start. So that ball hooks. He got four. Yikes. Anyway, let's keep looking. So... We have been over here. We'll go over here now. So this is just things to take, take note of, right? Now, if the pattern is 43 feet and it's hooking, then that may change, you know, what you want to use, right? That may change your opinion. It may change what you want to use. But if it's, in this case, we know it's 43 feet and we know it's got some volume to it, we definitely want to get equipment that's going to allow us to give us the, the best possible chance to hit the pocket. You're not necessarily, oh, she almost made that. You're not necessarily going to have a whole lot of room for error, but... You can make the pattern a whole lot harder too by not having uh, the right kind of equipment or not playing the right part of the lane. So we're seeing, like I said, we're seeing people. This guy jumping right here, he's playing inside. Got him a dull ball. Close, yeah, it's close, so he's struck. So um, that's, yeah, that's the one thing you can think about, right? So let's say you're practicing and you're lost. You may want to look for somebody who is uh, hitting the pocket and kind of see if they're throwing a shiny ball or a dull ball. If they're throwing, if they're playing inside, they're playing outside. And if they're striking and you're not, you may want to jump on their line with a product that's similar to what they've got and then see if you can make something happen from there, especially if you're lost. So just something to think about, something to consider when you're bowling a tournament. And uh, we're going to watch one more shot here. He's got a two-hander. He's inside two. Got a little shine on his bowling ball, but that bowling ball is close to two-hander and he's slow. So you get the bowling ball to hook back. So now you know a little trick and a little tip if you're bowling on a pattern, what to look for and what to expect 
uh, once you actually get on the lanes. With that being said, I'm going to jump off here, CEO, Ron, for the difference. Talk to you soon.